how to become a data scientist in 2024 and actually get a job. There has been a massive layout of data scientists these days in the tech industry. And yes, data scientists were part of it, but they only represented 10% of the whole sample. Other industries such as HR suffered with 28% of layout and software developers up to 22% of layout. So yeah, data scientists also suffered from layout from the tech bubble these days, but they only represent 10% of it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to become a data scientist in 2024 and actually get a job. So when people hear data scientists, they think of a combination of mathematics, statistics, coding, machine learning, artificial intelligence, visualizations, and so many things. And yeah, in most cases, this is completely right, but it doesn't mean your focus should be in all of these things because each and every part of these is a whole subject in itself. But yeah, data scientists usually englobe an understanding of so many topics that we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to structure this video into two main parts. The first one will focus on how to become a data scientist, and the second one will focus on how to stand out as a data scientist. So what is a data scientist? A data scientist, in a very basic definition, is someone who makes sense of data, whether they get a structured data and unstructured data, whether they need to get the data from the internet, from social media, whatever. There are people that can take information, raw information, and make sense of it, either via analysis, via visualizations, machine learning, AI, and more. Data science is a very trendy topic. It started 15 years ago and it keeps on growing year after year. It is expected that data science will grow by 36% within the next seven years. Everyone speaks about the importance of mathematics and statistics in data science, and this is very true. But I will argue that you need a basic understanding of these subjects. You don't need to be an expert in the mathematics, you don't need to be an expert in statistics. You won't be doing most of the calculations by hand because there are so many tools that you can use that do things already for you. Even when you do coding, there are some libraries that you can use that can do most of the heavy lift for you. But it doesn't mean that you should overlook mathematics and statistics. But I hear a lot on the internet that you need to be an expert in maths and in statistics in order to be a great data scientist. If you are and you have like a very good scientific background, that's definitely a plus. But these people are usually in research. They're not in application. When you're in research, yes, you need a solid understanding of these foundations. But when you apply data science into your project, in your, in your business or for clients, then you need a basic understanding of these things and especially how to apply them to get results. So yes, have an understanding of maths and statistics, but don't overly focus on them and spend years in maths, then years in statistics, then years in machine learning. No, just get a basic understanding and get going. One of the most important things in data science is business understanding. All the value that you provide for the client or for your employer or for yourself is based on the business understanding of the project. So when you work for a client, they really don't care what programming language you use. They only care about the results you're bringing them. They care about getting more income, more revenue, better decisions. That's what they care about. They don't care about coding in Python or using whatever machine learning out there. So first thing always for a data scientist, and that's something people overlook, they think, okay, I'm in a technical field, I need to do everything technical. That's not true with data scientists. There is a lot of thinking, there is a lot of business understanding, so that you can provide something that is tailored for your client. How can you possibly give them the best analysis and the best output if you don't even know what you're looking for? Next is learn to limit your focus. It is very tempting as a data scientist to focus on everything. Okay, let's learn about machine learning, let's learn about deep learning, let's learn about statistics, mathematics, and so much more, and so many models, so many tools and techniques and libraries and programming languages. It's endless. And when you start, each person will give you their two cents. They will say, okay, you need to do Python because it's the best. Someone else will say coding R because R visually and everything is better. You don't need to care too much about what everyone says. Limit your focus. Choose a few things. Start from there. Master them and keep on expanding over time. You don't need to do everything at once because you'll end up learning 
nothing from experience i tried at the beginning to learn everything at once it didn't work for me but then i focused on a few things okay i was like i'll choose python i'll master pandas i'll master some visualization using seaboard things like this and it helped me really limit my focus master these things and usually i can get 95 percent of my output from the things that i learned and then whenever i need to learn something new i just learn it if a project requires natural language processing then i will go and learn about natural language processing and just apply it into my project and this is how you keep learning over time you limit your focus at the beginning and then you expand will ai affect data scientists yes and in a good way, in my opinion. For example, before having ChatGPT, I used to do most of the heavy work myself. There were so many bugs, so many things to figure out. Of course, that's part of my job. I'm a problem solver. But now with ChatGPT or any other AI they use for coding and for a little bit of brainstorming, you can have a faster communication with a very intelligent tool that can help you speed up the process. So in my opinion, if you already have the basics right, if you already have a good business understanding, you know what the clients want and how to deliver it to them, AI can only be valuable to you. But if you're not willing to get the basics right, you're not willing to understand what's happening in the business, then yeah, probably at some point very soon, someone will develop some AI data scientists and that AI will do everything. But the human input is very, very valuable. So don't neglect the AI tools. Don't be the type of person when you hear AI, you're like, no, I don't want that. Because it's very powerful. It can speed up your process. And if you can use it in a smart way, then why not? It will just enhance your productivity. It shouldn't be the opposite. And the more you learn, the more clients you get, or the more valuable you become in your job, then no one will ever replace you. Because a data scientist is not, it's not just someone who just codes and does a few things. It's a whole pipeline. There are so many things that you're involved in. And your main goal is to drive revenue for the company. And if you do so, you'll never be replaceable. So part two now, how to stand out as a data scientist. And my number one tip here will be to start a personal brand. So what is a personal brand? Personal brand is having a presence online, whether it is via having a blog, having a YouTube channel, having a LinkedIn page, Instagram, whatever social media you enjoy or whatever medium you enjoy, maybe you write articles in Medium or Quora, or you wanna write on LinkedIn, more professional maybe, you wanna be on X or on Instagram because you prefer videos, visuals, whatever. Your personal brand is what you put out there on the internet. And see a personal brand a bit differently from just being on Facebook or being on Instagram or sharing your holidays. That's not insightful for anyone. But a personal brand is something that you provide value to people. At some point, people will follow you because they want to learn from you. So for example, I started my personal brand in data science very recently because I want to educate people that are coming, you know, people that are two steps behind me and that will benefit from what I know and what I did and all the experience I got. So that's a personal brand. It's a big leverage for you to get more opportunities and connect with the right people and you never know what can come in the future years. For example, in my case, I got my data science job just because I was very active on LinkedIn for a while. I network with people, I share valuable content, and at some point people just contact me. They're like, okay, we needed a data scientist and we've seen you everywhere. Why not speak and see if we're a good fit for each other? And then it happened. So I really encourage you to start a personal brand. Whatever it is, start small, start sharing content, Share things that you learn, that you feel already confident to share, and then go from there. Another important tip for people that are still in university or still preparing to become a data scientist via bootcamp, whatever learning medium that you prefer, is to start doing projects while still be in the process of studying, for example, in university. Why is that? Because at that time, during university, you got like years and years of learning, at that time, if you start doing projects, if you start showcasing them, as I told you, a personal brand, sharing your projects on GitHub, speaking to people about it, you gain so much more knowledge than just attending classes, doing a few projects here and there, and then after graduating, okay, you start applying for jobs, and then you're like, oh, oh my God, I'm quite late, I need to catch up, I need to put some projects on my GitHub portfolio. 
No, if you're in university and you're watching this right now, your biggest thing that you need to focus on right now is to start projects and showcase them to the world. It's good to do projects on the side, but if no one sees them, no one can see the value. So if you're in university or you're in the learning process of becoming a data scientist, please start doing projects today. And that will be one of the next videos that I will cover in my channel. And hopefully by the time you see this, you should be there. Another very important tip is improve your communication skills. As a data scientist, you speak a lot to clients, to consultants, to stakeholders, to your CEO, to the CTO, to whoever. And when you speak to them, you need to explain to them clearly what you do and what value you provide. So there is a misconception in the tech world that technical people only code, they're only you know, behind the screens and stuff. Yes, we spend a lot of time doing things, coding and stuff, but there is a lot of communication involved. And I can even tell you that since I became a data scientist, that's one of the most important things that you need to focus on. So if you lack a little bit of communication skills, a little bit of confidence, I advise you to work on it. For example, for me, as a Moroccan, speaking in English all the time, I had to overcome my fear of speaking in English. I took some English classes. I paid people randomly on an app called italki just to speak to people from all over the world, just to make sure, okay, I feel confident to speak. Because if I feel confident to speak in the first place, then I can express myself and then sell whatever I need to sell to the client or deliver whatever message it is. So yes, communication skill is very important. Statistics based on 1,000 plus jobs on LinkedIn says that usually those that work as data scientists have background in data science, in computer science, in statistic, and this represents like 90% of the sample. Only 10% or less come from a different background. They could come from economics, they could come from whatever. Some even come from boot camps and they manage to get it right. So my advice here will be, whatever your background, use the power of a personal brand and it will take some time. Don't think that you spend one month sharing content, for example, on LinkedIn and you will work no, six months, one year and keep doing it. It's a leverage that you can use for whatever. So grow a personal brand, no need to focus on followers and all those things. Yes, they're nice, but it's not the end goal. The end goal is for you to express yourself, to share your knowledge, and by sharing, you learn more as well. And also, showcase your projects. Do one project per month, or two projects per month. It doesn't sound like much, but if you compound them within one year, imagine you're in university, and within one year you did two projects a month, you have 24 projects on your GitHub, whoever will see it will, see, will say, okay, this person is very serious, you know? So leverage it. Imagine you do it during your whole period in university, you have like 50 projects or whatever. At the end of the day, recruiters, when they look for someone, especially when you're a fresher, you're just starting as a junior or from a graduate, they'll be like, okay, this person has 50 projects? You know, like, they'll be like, okay, that's a no brainer. We want to speak to him or to her, you know? So be like this person, do a lot of projects and it will help you learn a lot and be so confident when you get a job, you'll be like, okay, I've done like, 50-70% of this. You still need to learn, that's always the case, but you'll have a big edge over anyone else. For people that come from different backgrounds, use your expertise to your advantage. So I hear people saying, okay, but I come from an economical uh, background, or I come from a completely architecture background, or construction, they're like, okay, I'm so far away from data science or any tech related thing. And I tell those people that you have a massive leverage here. Yes, the transition might be different for you because you'll need to learn the fundamentals of computer science, some coding, some algorithmics, some mathematics, statistics. Yes, and as I said at the beginning of the video, in a basic way, no need to dive too deep into them, but you need the basics right, so you know what you're doing. But you can leverage your expertise in data science, and that's very niche and very powerful. So people, when they think of data science, they think of something broad. Like for me, I do consulting data science. So I don't care what projects I receive. I can work on something related to sales, to retail, to work in sports. I don't care. I adapt, which is one of my strengths. But for someone who comes from architecture or construction, they can leverage all their knowledge 
in data science. So when they learn the basics, they can leverage it in construction. So they can look for jobs or for projects in construction and architecture in data science. And this usually pays twice or three times more than a basic data scientist working in finance or for the government. So that's powerful. Yes, the learning curve will be a little bit longer and a little bit more difficult because everything is new. But if you know how to leverage it, you'll gain massive, massive, massive opportunities from it. And finally, how to prepare for interviews. So here I have just a few tips. To prepare for interviews, just don't put on your CV things that you don't know. So it's tempting to put a bunch of skills because it was on a job, uh, on a job description. And then you're like, okay, just so I can get the interview. This might work, but when the interviewer asks you about one of those skills and they ask you, okay, what have you done with it? Or they ask you something a little bit technical, or they ask you to do some coding tests, then you feel like, okay, you are trapped. So avoid doing that. Just put on your strengths, develop them well, and make sure you give them some examples of projects that you've done in a very detailed way, and also what was the impact of your work. That's something that people overlook. They're like, okay, I worked on 10 projects in this data set, this data set, this data set, but you don't say what was the impact of your work. So when you're doing projects, at the beginning, you can do some basic ones. Just the ones that you're finding can go straightforward, do some analysis and all of these things, just to practice coding, analysis, visualizations, even machine learning, for example. But then try to do things that are a little bit more challenging, things that require some business understanding, some critical thinking. And those projects are the one you will speak about in an interview. If you got a bit of experience before as a data scientist and you're looking for another job, then leverage all the things you've done in detail in your interview. So this is it. We talk about how to become a data scientist and also how to stand out as a data scientist. I hope this comprehensive video gave you a little bit of clarity on the process of becoming a data scientist and hopefully getting a job in 2024. Please drop in the comments any questions you might have. I'll make sure to answer them. You can even connect with me on LinkedIn and we can talk about your progress or whatever vision you might have. And if you need my help, you can reach out to me directly. It's Anas Riyad. You'll find me directly on LinkedIn. And please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe. Maybe share it with friends that want to become also data scientists. They will help me and hopefully help them as well. Thank you for watching.